What's up, everybody? This is Brandon Lundberg with Football Scout 365 here for another episode of After Further Review, the NFL Draft Edition. And today we are going to examine 2021 NFL Draft wide receiver prospects Devontae Smith, Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddell, and Rondale Moore. Before we get started, I want to remind everyone to follow us on Instagram at Football Scout 365 and on Twitter. You can find us by just searching for Football Scout 365. You can listen to every After Further Review episode in podcast form. You can find us on Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcasts or anywhere podcasts can be found. Just search Football Scout 365. And as I imagine, if you are watching us on YouTube currently so that you can get to the film evaluation portion and see it with your own eyes, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more great content. All right, so we are going to start the evaluations off with Alabama wide receiver Devontae Smith, who is the number one wide receiver on the Football Scout 365 NFL Draft Big Board, which you can find over at footballscout365.com. Devontae Smith, he's, he's an absolute gamer. He rises to the occasion in the big moments. You, you had seen that in his freshman season in the national title game when he caught the game-winning touchdown in overtime, uh, winning the national championship. That's, that's one heck of a huge moment for a freshman wide receiver. Uh, his combination of quick, efficient footwork, great hands, and fluid route running are tailor-made for the NFL. Smith appeared to be second fiddle to Jalen Waddle coming into 2020, and then Jalen Waddle got injured. Post the Jalen Waddle injury, Smith took over the offense. He was already, you know, proving that he could be the number one wide receiver in the Alabama offense prior to the Jalen Waddle injury, but he just further solidified, you know, his ability to be that number one guy in the offense post Jalen Waddle injury. He went on to win the Heisman Trophy, as everyone knows, the first wide receiver to do it since Desmond Howard in the early 90s. So, I mean, this guy, for every reason, and, and you'll see it in the film, what we're, what we're going to show you or what I'm going to try to show you in only four clips uh, should try to help you better understand or is meant to try to help you better understand why we have Devontae Smith as our number one receiver. And hey, Jamar Chase, very close number two. They both possess a lot of similarities. Obviously, Devontae Smith is 170 pounds, but we'll go over some of that and, and what differentiates the two a little bit. You'll, you'll see exactly what differentiates the two, but you can't go wrong drafting either one. And we actually expect, I, I actually, my last mock draft has Jamar Chase going number five to the Bengals ahead of Devontae Smith. So even though Smith is our number one receiver, I fully expect Jamar Chase to be the number one guy off the board. More so because of Joe Burrow, the camaraderie between Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, you know, from their time at LSU, I believe there's a chemistry there that if he's on the Bengals, it's just going to make that offense even more dynamic. So we'll get to that conversation, you know, once we're in the film evaluation uh, and, and we're moving forward, we'll, I'll try to break down the differences between the two, or at least, you know, as I'm going through the film, maybe you'll start to recognize the differences between the two players. We're going to go ahead and start off with the number one wide receiver on the Football Scout 365 NFL Draft Big Board here. That's Alabama wide receiver Devontae Smith. As you can see, this is the uh, college football playoff national championship game from uh, this past season. And Devontae Smith here at the top of the screen, lined up across from Sean Wade. Smith's going to kind of hit him with a little bit of a one-two uh, rocker step right here, and then he's going to release to the outside. And what he's going to do once he gets to the top of his route is he's selling hard early on that this is a deep route. And Sean Wade's probably thinking in his mind on film, this is what Devontae Smith generally does, right? When he, when he gets that outside release, he wants to go deep fade or, or a nine route, for example. But Smith does a good job stopping on a dime. Uh, he turns inside, and he just lays out, and he makes a beautiful back shoulder catch, and, and it's a beautifully placed football by Mac Jones on this particular play. And, you know, it, it, it's a back shoulder fade, essentially, 
and it's an absolute dime. So I'll go ahead and run this real quick. And as you can see, as I, as I already stated, Smith hits him one, two. You see how he's squaring up? So he drives into Wade. Wade actually gets hands on Smith here, which is good. And he's trying to force him to the sideline there. And Smith just uses his speed to gain, you know, enough separation that Wade's hand usage isn't even really a factor. I'll just let it play. You can see right there, Devontae Smith just makes an absolutely amazing play. He gets both feet inbounds. It's an NFL catch. Sean Wade. And as you can see right here is a good example. Wade, his body, his momentum carries him away, and Smith is able to just stop and make an amazing play on the sideline there with very little room to begin with. But as you can see, this is where the length of Devontae Smith comes into play here. Um, and I think this is going to be, you know, one of the staples in his ability uh, as he moves to the NFL level. And as you can see here, we got Marvin Harrison. And we've got the Marvin Harrison stamp of approval here. So this is uh, somebody that Devontae Smith has actually drawn some comparisons to. I heard Daniel Jeremiah from NFL Network actually bring it up. Uh, Marvin Harrison is, is a decent comp, I think, to in, in terms of the abilities that Devontae Smith possesses. His ball skills, just unprecedented what he's able to do. So he's not just a straight line speed guy. He's not just this guy who's a good route runner. He's actually, you know, he can be physical for his size at 170 pounds as well. He's able to fight off, you know, DBs who are getting hands on him. And he's, he uses his athleticism very, very well in terms of especially how he handled Sean Wade here. Wade was getting hands on him at the beginning of the route, and he's still able to separate from Sean Wade just enough to get upfield, to sell that fade route, that deeper route that it looked like he was going to go on. And then he turns, stops, and he's right there leaning outside for that back shoulder fade. And Sean Wade is just his momentum carries him out of the uh, hip pocket of Devontae Smith. And there's nothing you can really do about this. So excellent play by Devontae Smith here. Play number two for Devontae Smith is a bit of a high, highlight reel for the ages, so to speak. Maybe the Heisman moment in the uh, 2020 season for Devontae Smith. So Smith is going to get a free release against Derek Stingley. He's lined up at the top of the screen here, just uh, on the numbers here at the 20. And so Alabama is essentially, they're, they're in the red zone or, or on the cusp of the red zone here. And what you're going to see Smith do on this particular play is he's going to take, well, Stingley's going to give him, you know, an inside release, right? So Stingley is going to open up. He's going to, you know, try to force him inside, kind of funnel him funnel him inside this way and Smith is going to take that and Smith will be running what is called a post corner. So he's going to sell post at the top of his route. So he's going to get to the top of his route. He's going to sell the post and he's going to break that post back to the corner. And what's, what's great about this play though, by the way, is Derek Stingley does a really good job, by the way, of kind of keeping, you know, his position on this particular play He's not hardcore, you know, sold on the post. I feel like he felt that, you know, there would be help that would get there in the deep middle for the post. And then when Smith makes his break to the corner, to the back of the end zone, um, Stingley is actually in good position, but Mac Jones just throws a beautifully placed football to that back corner. And clearly, like the last play, Jones understands the personnel or the guy that he's throwing it to. And he just puts it up to only where Devontae Smith is the only guy that is going to get that football, and he makes just an incredible catch. So I'll go ahead and run it. You can see Smith gets that easy inside release and, and against a soft press versus Derek Stingley. You don't really see the route here, but you can see he skies for this. Just makes an absolute beautiful catch. Stingley's like, what in the world? Like, what just happened, right? And I can tell you what just happened. You got mossed. 
And Randy Moss, you got that Randy Moss stamp of approval over here. Devontae Smith, so that's a big deal, man. It's a big, big deal when Randy Moss approves. Devontae Smith is going to, you know, blow kisses to the crowd. And so Stingley is clearly, this is like, you know, he's funneling him inside. Keep him inside. Don't let him get that outside. But, you know, Smith, and you can see right here, he's looking back. And that's the key to selling a route. Or selling this post corner. And, and even when he does look back, you want to look directly back at the quarterback. It, it doesn't, when you're running any route and, and you're getting ready to sell some sort of a double move, you, you do want to try to make direct eye contact back at the quarterback to try to sell the defenders more. And Stingley, clearly there's space here for the quarterback to make a throw if he wanted to. And Stingley is just kind of like, hanging out back here and he just remains in good position and it just does not matter at all so again huge play here by uh Devontae smith against stingley in lsu and again like this is probably the heisman moment for Devontae smith in the 2020 season and hats off you know just makes a spectacular play in a big moment for uh, Alabama. This is going to be a good example of Devontae Smith's ability uh, to beat soft man press here. He drives the defender back. Singley never gets hands on him on this particular play. And therefore, Devontae Smith gets yet again another free release. Uh, and, and there's no help over the top on this particular play. So he's getting man to man, uh, you know, at the bottom of the screen here. This is a really, really talented player at corner here. And Devontae Smith just, you know, uses his speed and athleticism to beat him over the top and stacks him pretty quickly here. And Tua Tungavailoa, this is back in 2019, by the way. This is not uh, the game from a year ago. Uh, this is with Tua at quarterback, and Tua is just going to make a, a beautiful throw here, hitting Devontae Smith in stride. So we'll go ahead and run it. And again, just like on that last play that we showed you where, well, actually, the two plays ago versus Sean Wade, right? He gives you that one-two and then gets that outside release as he did against Sean Wade with no... Wade actually got hands on him a little bit uh, at the beginning of the route. But, you know, this could have been a similar situation, right? You, you bait a guy into that deep route. But this is what you look at on film. If you're Sean Wade, you know you have to be prepared for that deep route. So sometimes it's better safe than sorry. And Sean Wade was more prepared for him to tr just try to take the top off of everything on a deep shot play like this uh, two plays ago. And that's how Devontae Smith was able to get that easy back shoulder fade. It was easily sold to Sean Wade. But this is a great example of his deep speed, his ability to, to beat a man at the line of scrimmage, get that free release. Here's a replay of it. And Stingley's just grabbing and grabbing and grabbing there at the back end. He knows he's beat. So he's doing whatever he can to try to try to get him. And again, Stingley, so corners in situations like this, uh, the goal generally when you're running with a guy down the sideline is you want to squeeze him to the sideline as much as you can. And he's just unable to do that. Smith, his athletic ability, you know, give him a free release. You, you can't even get him off his route a bit and, and things like this are going to happen. And this is a big deal once he gets to the NFL level. All right, play number four here. This is against Ohio State once again. We've got Devontae Smith. He's at the top of the screen here. And this is a second down and four play for Alabama. And so Sean Wade, once again, is in coverage. And he is, you know, showing like a soft press here. So He's not really challenging Smith. He, he's going to soft press. What you do is you let the, you know, the receiver get to you. And then that's when you try to initiate contact to throw him off the route. And on this particular play, and we'll just go ahead and start it. Now, this, this is what Wade was worried about. And I just brought this up on the last play that, you know, his ability, Smith's ability to get a free release get outside, um, you know, get outside of your leverage as a defender 
and just simply run past you and run underneath a beautifully thrown football, which when you've got Tua and you've got Mac Jones, two guys who do a really good job at throwing an accurate deep ball and getting it to the right spot, you know, you add in the athleticism of Devontae Smith on a play like this, and, and this is the result of that. And this is just a beautiful uh, move at the uh, line of scrimmage here uh, by Devontae Smith. And he, he hits him with a one, two, three, and then boom, he heads straight up field on this deep fade route. And I'll go ahead and run it here. And again, Wade cannot get hands on him, cannot slow down the route whatsoever. And the result is another explosive play for Alabama. One, two, three. See that? I mean, this is Devontae Adams type of stuff right here. I mean, this is a really solid route. As you can see, Jerry Rice over here. Um, Devontae Smith is getting that Jerry Rice stamp of approval, gets the thumbs up on this one. Anytime Jerry Rice approves, that's a good thing. He just gets this. I mean, here's, here's where he already has Wade beat, right? Wade is already moving inside, right? So he's planted this way. Now he's got to work himself back the direction of that route because he just gave up outside leverage to Devontae Smith. And Smith is just going to head up that sideline. Now, as a corner, you're like, okay, I'm trailing, and I need to be able to catch up, right? And he's just unable to do that. Mac Jones recognizes it immediately and just throws a beautiful football before that middle safety can get there. Result, like I said, explosive play for Alabama. All right, we're going to move on now to LSU wide receiver Jamar Chase. Chase has great hands. He's a good route runner. He's good at running after the catch. He's also a willing blocker in the run game, which is by far one of the uh, biggest things that I'm looking for when I'm watching film. Is a guy willing to block and is he able to block? All of those are a big time deal, especially at the NFL level. The big question for me is how well Chase will be able to acclimate himself to the NFL game after taking a full season off as well as not being within that structured system um, under Joe Brady, who was the offensive coordinator at LSU, now the offensive coordinator with the Carolina Panthers, uh, who runs a Sean Payton-style system. It'll be interesting to see. Now, if he does get drafted by the Bengals, there'll be some chemistry there with Joe Burrow, so I think that that may help him you know, early on when he gets to the NFL if, if the Bengals do, in fact, draft him at number five. Uh, Chase is just a, an outstanding player who, un, who will undoubtedly find his way um, to playing at a high level in the NFL. His scheme fit, he can play any position on the field. There isn't really a specific one. And, you know, he can play in any offensive system in the NFL as well. So now we're just going to hop over and take a look at the film for LSU wide receiver Jamar Chase. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at play number one here for LSU wide receiver Jamar Chase, the number two wide receiver on the Football Scout 365 NFL Draft Big Board Rankings. And Chase is actually lined up across from current NFL corner A.J. Terrell. And this is from 2019. Obviously, Chase did not play in 2020. He opted out. But what we're going to get a good example of here is Jamar Chase's ability to get a quick release and fight through press man coverage here. So Terrell's going to get hands on Chase here in press coverage, and Chase is going to be able to fight through that, maintain his route down the field, and he just makes a spectacular play. He's able. He also shows his ability to track the football as well on this particular play. And I'll go ahead and run this. So you can see right here, Terrell is able to get a good punch here on Chase, but Chase is, is you can see his arm right here is getting ready to swat that, that arm down. Can't really see it too clear, but Chase maintains through this route. It's a beautifully thrown ball, by the way, by Joe Burrow on this play. And what's great is you get a good example here of Jamar Chase's ability after the catch. And there's a few plays we're going to cover here where Chase shows his ability after the catch with the football. We'll take one more good look at this here. Boom. 
He's fighting through the uh, hands here. So they hand fight all the way down the field, pretty much. And Chase just uses his strength to overpower the hand fighting. And Joe Burrow puts the ball right where it needs to be. Perfect ball placement by Joe Burrow, by the way. Outside the numbers there, close to the side sideline, only where his guy has a shot. Chase gets the ball and makes a play after the catch as well. So a good uh, example um, of what Jamar Chase brings to the table as a player here for play number one. All right, so this is play number two for Jamar Chase going against one of the worst pass defenses in 2019, by the way, Ole Miss. And Chase is at the uh, bottom of the screen here, and he is facing off coverage. And what you're going to see here is Chase is going to run somewhat of, of what looks like a lazy looking hitch route here. And the corner just kind of sits there in that particular spot where the hitch goes. Burrow is going to, you know, look to escape the pocket. Chase actually recognizes that and then moves into the open area here in the middle of the field, which is good. And Burrow is going to find him. And then you're going to see his ability once again after the catch with the football in the open field. And, and he's actually, he shows his strength as well. Uh, defenders struggle to actually bring him down. So I'll go ahead and run this. And again, like I said, you're going to see a hitch route here. One, two, three, four. And he just sits right here, right? And then Burrow is pressured, has a man right there, by the way. He moves out. Chase recognizes it, gets right into his uh, line of sight there and makes that catch. And then on the run here, just makes a perfect play. Fighting, 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 getting that ball inside the five-yard line there. An excellent play by Burrow to keep it alive, to get out of the you know face of pressure there, and to find the open man. And Jamar Chase does a good job. A little bit of the scramble drill there. Get into your quarterback's line of sight, find that open area, and that's what you want to see uh, in terms of communication between your quarterback and receiver. And that, again, is probably what the Bengals are looking at too. Like You, you know that these two have a camaraderie already built up. And if Burrow's out there lobbying for Chase to be that pick at number five, if he's there, there's a reason for that. And All right, so play number three for Jamar Chase. This, this is a really, really good play. I like this play. There's so many things that happen in this play. Uh, the TV copy, though, I, I can't stand it. It is the uh, SEC network here. They actually don't do a really good job showing the replay of Jamar Chase making you know, his full route. Uh, before he makes it just an absolutely spectacular play on the football. They're so concerned about Joe Burrow, who takes a shot from two defenders before or as he's making the throw, that they're not really that concerned about the fantastic play that Jamar Chase just made. So anyway, we'll hop into this. So the corner is playing off, off, of, the, uh, off of Jamar Chase here at the bottom of the screen. And Chase, what he's going to do is he's going to drive the defender. He's going to run an out. And then he's going to run an up. So he's running an out and up. And Chase will, what this does, what this is supposed to do is freeze the defender. And it, it works for Chase on this particular play. I wish I could see whether or not Chase is actually snapping his head back to look back at Joe Burrow to really sell it. But I can't really tell uh, from this angle. But he does get separation, and the, and the football is slightly underthrown, and for good reason, because Burrow is taking a shot. But Chase just makes a spectacular play. So let's go ahead and run it. And you can see right here, and he doesn't, and I can see here at the bottom of the screen right here, Chase isn't really throwing himself into a full 90-degree angle here to, to, you know, sell that out route before he breaks with the up route, right? But again, he makes a spectacular play here at the end. It's underthrown. He goes up. Randy Moss, a stamp of approval right here. You got Moss. He just makes a spectacular play. He gets both feet in, by the way, on this. Flags are down. Might have been interference on this play. I can't remember. I do know. I, I believe that uh, Burrow gets the... Uh, Gets hit late, maybe? No, actually, it might have been a targeting. I can't remember. I feel like there were a couple flags thrown, interference and everything. A lot of things were happening. A lot of moving parts on this particular play. But, again, Chase does a spectacular job making a uh, contested catch. 
Okay, so play number four here for LSU wide receiver Jamar Chase. We're going to get a good example once again of his ability to high point the football and just kind of go over the top of a defensive back to make a play. This is another underthrown ball by Joe Burrow here. This one's not underthrown due to pressure. And if it's, if it's actually thrown out in front of Chase, this would be a touchdown. But again, this shows that Chase is really good with his timing and tracking the football and going up to make a play. The defensive, the defensive back actually gets back into a good position, but he never really has a chance on this play. It's just pure athleticism by Chase when he high points the football to keep it high and away from the defender. And I'll, I'll go ahead and run this here. So again, the corner never really gets hands on Chase or, or challenges him whatsoever. So Chase just gets free reign to sprint down the sideline here. And again, like I said, if that football would have been thrown out front, Chase is walking into the end zone, right? This corner has no chance. But the corner is able to actually, the corner turns around, he turns into a receiver essentially on this play. But Chase just goes up over the top here, high points it perfectly, and this corner has no chance. It's just pure athleticism by Jamar Chase, just a better athlete than this guy. My athlete's better than your athlete situation. He high points the football, and he brings it down. He doesn't really snap it down like you're supposed to. Usually when you high point it, you come down, you want to snap down and away from the from the defender, but the defender never really is in position to, to get his arm in there to swipe that thing away. So just a, a beautiful play here by Jamar Chase. Hey, ref, timeout, timeout. What's up, everybody? I wanted to take a quick timeout to plug the 5 Tool Sports podcast, a show that covers all things NFL, including the occasional NBA podcast and the oh-so-long-awaited sports betting content that seems like it's been in the works for months and it's finally on the way. You can listen to me on all of the football-related shows, in addition to host Woody Massey, analyst Nate Parker, and analyst C.J. McLaughlin. Just search the number 5 Tool Sports Podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts can be found. All right, so now to the number three player on the Football Scout 365 NFL Draft Big Board, and that is Alabama wide receiver Jalen Waddell. This dude is so impressive. And, you know, I'm evaluating Devontae Smith at one point. And as I had mentioned with Devontae Smith, there were question marks heading into 2020 and early on in 2020 before Waddle actually got hurt. You know, who is the real number one receiver? And everybody thought, you know, or most people believed it was Jalen Waddle, obviously. But both guys, exceptional players. But Waddle just, there's something about him that just makes you believe that he's going to have a lot of success at the NFL level. This guy is borderline unguardable. His speed, his twitchiness in space, it's just, it's, it's so amazing, right? You know, I, I'm in love with Rondale Moore, but, you know, watching Jalen Waddle more and more, this dude is just so freaking impressive. It's unreal. And honestly, you know, if, if he doesn't get hurt in 2020, who knows? He might be the one, you know, hoisting the Heisman Trophy at the end of the season and not Devontae Smith. So, the guy's so impressive, and we'll we'll look at his film. You're going to see a lot of what we're talking about here in the player skill set and traits, and, and I'll run through this real fast. So Waddle is not just a straight-line speed player. A lot of people, there's this misconception. Obviously, Henry Ruggs came into the NFL a season ago. A lot of people are like, oh, yeah, this guy is blazing fast, right? But he Ruggs is, is not as twitchy or, or doesn't possess that lateral ability that, that uh, Jalen Waddle does. So... There, there are some major differences between the two players. Waddle is absolutely the better player of the two. Hands down, Jalen Waddle is a better player than Henry Ruggs. Not that Henry Ruggs is a bad player. Waddle possesses just a lot more, right, in his tool belt. In addition to the speed, Waddle has incredible hands. Uh, he, he is able to high point the football with ease. This guy at his size, he's not just a guy who catches it and needs space and is going to make moves. He will run through tackles. He'll run through arm tackles. He will go up and he will attack the catch point. He'll go up in traffic and make catches. And, and I, I clipped a few of these because I, I want to kind of separate that straight line speed, right? The guy who's catching the bombs 50 yards down the field and scoring touchdowns. I wanted to present some of the other skill sets that I think are very impressive when you watch him on film. Though he is an undersized player, 
He does possess top level NFL traits. In addition to that, he's a really good special teams player. Like he can return punts. I I don't want to see him doing that in the NFL so much, but when needed, he can go out there and do it. Um, but again, he is a guy that defenses will always have to consider adding that extra defender to kind of bracket him, to keep him under wraps. Very similar to a Tyreek Hill situation, which opens things up for other guys. Now, I know. I'm not trying to compare him to Tyreek Hill, saying that he is Tyreek Hill or the next Tyreek Hill. He is the Jalen Waddle and not Tyreek Hill. But when I do bring things up, Tyreek Hill to me is arguably the best wide receiver in the NFL. And I do believe that he does require extra attention. Just about if you don't put an extra set of eyes on the guy, at least, then you're not doing your job as a defensive coordinator, right? I believe Jalen Waddle possesses that ability as well. Waddle. His scheme fit, for example, he can play, really he can play any wide receiver position, but I think his real strength will be in the slot or, you know, the Z position, off ball, moving around. He does possess an ability to get off untouched, off of the line of scrimmage untouched, especially when challenged in press coverage, he can do that as well. So regardless of where he lines up, he, he's he's not dependent on where you put him, but I think he'll really thrive in the slot position at the next level. He's also a guy too, that you can move into the backfield and do some stuff with out of the backfield. So he, and he is not a gadget player or a gimmick player whatsoever. He is just a high level athlete who can do just about anything on the football field. All right, so we're gonna take a look at play number one for the number three wide receiver on the Football Scout 365 NFL Draft Big Board. And that is Alabama's Jalen Waddell. The first play here is exclusively just to show off his athletic ability. It's a punt return that he takes to the house here. And what you're going to see immediately is the first thing, he takes contact as soon as he receives the punt. So he displays perfect contact balance. He just bounces off of it. And then he shows the vision and the ability and the awareness to recognize where the open field is, gets there, finds his blockers. Uh, as he just uses his speed to get to the end zone. So you see so many different things in his ability here as a playmaker and what's going to really help him advance his game at the NFL level. So many things happen here. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. And there's the punt. So this guy right here is going to make contact. Boom, right? Gets a hold of him. Doesn't matter. Might have been a face mask there. Waddle gets away and it's just lights out. I mean, you see his ability to locate that space. And once you give him room, he's gone. And as you can see here, this is uh, Devin Hester approved. He gets the Devin Hester stamp of approval. He's like, bro, stop. <laughs> and it's just a spectacular punt return here and a brilliant display of athleticism once again. Jalen Waddle. So as we move forward, we'll talk more about, you know, how this correlates. Taking a look here at play number two for Alabama wide receiver Jalen Waddle, you're going to see, you know, a good display of Waddle's ability as a route runner, his ability to gain separation, and he's just an absolute mismatch for defenders. And on this play, you'll see Waddle, who is at the bottom of the screen here, uh, with Jerry Judy directly behind him here. You're going to see him kind of run like a what looks like a wheel route to the outside. This DB is going to switch here and take Judy. And this uh, defensive back right here is going to be responsible for Jalen Waddle. And Waddle is just going to run what looks like a wheel route and has the speed to break this thing down the middle of the field here. And he just absolutely obliterates the coverage down the field, gets behind him. And this is a play I look at and I say, you know, this displays his, his hands, his ability to accelerate, track the football, time things up perfectly, and make just a spectacular play. Even if the throw is not perfect or on the money or hitting him in stride, he's able to track it, and he shows off the wheels to get to it, even if it was overthrown a bit. So I'll go ahead and run this. And here you go. You see him right here. Here's Jerry Judy. This defensive back is going to take Judy on the inside. And Waddle's just, he's getting to the middle of the field so fast. It's, it's pretty incredible. 
and he just tracks it, gets it. That thing's just a little, if there's a little less umph from Tua here, he's walking into the end zone for six. But again, I, I want to show you, you know, this play as an example of his route running ability. He's not just a straight line guy. He's a guy who has some nuance to his game. There's another play that I'll show you here that, that gives you a good example of what he can do. But this deep metal safety right here, though, gets occupied by Jerry Judy. And that does open things up here for uh, Waddle to just have free reign down the center of the field here. So just really good play design, by the way. Sets a lot of things up. You think that he's going to run that wheel route. You might be able to squeeze him on the sideline. And then next thing you know, he's going right down the middle of the field, right? Where the middle field player just vacated to take on another number one draft pick who is, by the way, a wide receiver at Alabama on this particular play. But Waddle just shows off the superior athleticism on this particular play. Taking a look here at play number three for Jalen Waddle, we're going to get an example of a different, the different ways that Jalen Waddle can win. And what I mean by that is his ability as, you know, a route runner, his ability to do things laterally and not just with straight line speed. And on this particular play, though, you're going to get a good example of Jalen Waddle's ability to go up and make a catch in traffic and maintain control of the football uh, with two defenders, you know, actually he, do, he does it between two defenders here. So this is just a spectacular play. And this is just another reason why Jalen Waddell, you know, he shows up on film here a lot, uh, show, showing off these, you know, these dynamic playmaking abilities, and it just blows you away. But we'll go ahead and run this. Waddle's right here. He's on that. He's in the inside slot position right here. He's getting off coverage. You're just going to see him. Of course, this is a bad camera angle. I can't, you can't see the whole route without an all 22 view here, but you can see two defenders here. The ball is thrown just to that spot, right? And he just, he goes, he goes and gets it. He attacks the football, he high points it, and he just catches it between two defenders. He takes a hit that spins him around and he just hangs onto the football. So just an absolutely dynamic play by a dynamic football player. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look here at play number four for Alabama wide receiver Jalen Waddell. And what we're gonna get a good example of is Jalen Waddell's ability as a route runner. So we've already seen his athletic ability in space as a punt returner. Uh, we already know that he, he can take the top off a of defense at any time, but this is just an excellent example of him using his uh, route running ability and his ability to stop on a dime and make precise cuts uh, while moving at a really, really high rate of speed uh, to displace defenders, right? So what he does here is he sells that he is going to run what looks like potentially a crossing route uh, to the middle of the field here. And he's going to take these defenders. He's going to hold the defenders here in the middle before making just an absolute pre precise cut and running an out route where Mac Jones just makes a, a good throw here. Waddle has to go up to get it, so it's a little bit of a high throw, but Waddle shows his athleticism as a pass catcher as well. So I'll go ahead and run this. So you'll watch him here, selling, 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 right? Looks like a cross, like he's going to run some sort of a cross route here, and he just makes a precise cut, and the defenders are unable to, to stay with him at all. They're... <laughs> They're just basically standing in quicksand on this particular play, and he just makes a spectacular catch. And, and that this is the differentiating factor between, in, in my eyes, this is what separates Jalen Waddell from Henry Ruggs in, in, in that whole debate, that conversation about the straight line speed guy uh, that people you know originally believed Jalen Waddell to be. And that's just not not the case with Jalen Waddle. He can do so many different things as a dynamic football player. His route running ability is exceptional. And, you know, as you've seen in previous plays, he can make catches in traffic, contested catches in traffic. He's a tough player. He can take a hit with, you know, he displayed perfect contact balance on that punt return in the first play that we showed you. So he does that a lot as well when he's catching the football out in space and, and, you know, the yards after the, the catch ability. So 
again, this is why he does draw comparisons to Tyreek Hill and what in terms of that skill set. Not saying he is Tyreek Hill, but I am saying that he does have that very similar skill set, that lateral movement and ability, the ability to where defenders can never really get hands on him at the line of scrimmage to impede his route. And that's what's going to separate him at the NFL level. And it does, you know, everything that I've seen on film assures me that he is a top 15 or even a top 10 NFL draft pick. If it weren't, once again, for all the quarterbacks and maybe Jamar Chase and Devontae Smith being taken ahead of him, I could see Waddle going ahead of one of those guys if a team really, really falls in love with him. So this guy has top 10 draft pick potential, probably going to be picked in the top 15. All right, moving on to the number four wide receiver on the Football Scout 365 NFL Draft Big Board. That's Purdue's Rondale Moore. You know, this dude, I had him at one point as the number two receiver. I might have had him at the number one receiver. I can't remember. He slid backwards a little bit for me, and I think it does have a little bit to do with the injury history. I don't believe he's just like injury prone. I just think there's been some bad luck, right? But we never know, right? You never know what's going to happen to a guy when he gets to the next level. But man, when he's healthy, he's so damn impressive. It, it's it's incredible watching this guy. I got to watch a lot of him living in, you know, Big Ten country, watched a lot of Purdue football. And this dude, he is just as dynamic a player as you're going to get. When you look at what Jalen Waddle, as we just discussed, the ability or the abilities and the skill sets and the traits that Jalen Waddle possesses, and you look at Rondell Moore, they're very, very similar. Now, there's a question mark about uh, Rondell Moore's height. I know here on the graphic, I'd say he's five foot nine. Well, that's what they say at Purdue and, and that's how he measured out, or at least that's maybe in cleats and with his hair, right? He's five foot nine, but He's actually measured out at five foot seven. He was measured at five foot seven during his pro day. Not a big deal to me. It's a big deal to a lot of other people, but I just don't, I don't look at that and say, okay, I'm not interested in this guy anymore. He's just so dynamic, so fast, so twitchy. You can do so many different things with him, very similar to Jalen Waddle, that I'm not really that concerned. I believe he will find a role in the NFL and he may be able to find a high level role, especially as a slot receiver or a guy who can come into the backfield and do so many different things. I think that he possesses the ability to do that. I do think that he could even, you know, if you want to line this dude up at the X, I, he'll get a free release, right? He's going to find his way into a free release. Now I don't suggest putting him in the X, I suggest playing him off ball more to guarantee that free release and his ability to get up field. Uh, so again, you know, and, and I'll run through his player skill set and traits. More defines speed and space, but he also defies logic at five foot seven, 180 pounds. He reportedly can squat 600 pounds. Uh, when he is not making a defender miss in a phone booth, he has the power to run through arm tackles and more. He actually ran through players several times. You'll see that in some examples on film uh, when we get to that point here in a moment. Uh, more can line up all over the formation. He can flex out wide in the slot or in the backfield. He is a good route runner. He is also a dynamic special teams player. The only knock, once again, is his health. What's he, you know, what, it, what will he look like post-injury? We got a little sample size uh, last year. He kind of opted out and then came back and played. So, you know, I want to see him at full health as he was in his freshman season, which was just monumental, by the way. So his uh, scheme fit, I believe he can play pretty much in any scheme. He can play at any position on the field. I do think that he'll really, really, you know, he'll kind of flourish in the slot position more than any other position on the field. If I were to compare him though, to any player, honestly, you know, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Steve Smith, maybe Tyler Lockett as well. So like a combination of the two, just a tough player, man. I'm telling you right now, this guy, when he gets drafted, wherever he goes, he's going to be a difference maker regardless of his size. So let's move into the film so I can prove this to you. I know it's only four clips, but I'm going to do my best to sell you on Rondell Moore. So let's take a look here at play number one for Purdue wide receiver Rondell Moore, who is the number four wide receiver on the Football Scout 365 NFL Draft Big Board. 
On this particular play, you're going to see Moore, who is up here at the top of the screen. He was in the slot. He's coming downhill to take a jet sweep. He's going to actually receive the handoff here to go around end. And there is a play action actually attached to this, this play as well. I like the design of this play, by the way. The blocking on the edge is absolutely superb, which makes it you know, even more difficult for defenders to defend when you have an athlete such as Rondell Moore who is able to uh, you know, get upfield and make precise cuts. And once he has any amount of space, he's going to make defenders miss. And he also, we're going to see a couple clips where he displays his power as a runner as well. For somebody who's only five foot seven, uh, 180 pounds, this is, he's just such a spectacular athlete. He's like a running back when he gets the football in his hands, whether he's taking it on a jet sweep like this or catching it in the open field. He's just his after, you know, the catch ability is, is spectacular. But again, getting back to this play, he's going to take this jet sweep, coming downhill in motion here, boom. And what I love, about this play is there's this tight end is is pinning uh, this defender down and then you're going to get the tackle who is pulling right so this tackle all of this action is happening as defenders are looking in the backfield uh, paying close attention to who the heck has the football right so eye discipline becomes a major factor here because this play action is also going to hold the eyes of the linebackers here who are unsure of the five foot seven dude who just took the jet sweep, right? The most dynamic player on the field. And keep in mind this, this game was Rondell Moore's first game as a true freshman at Purdue. And he just put up like crazy numbers in this game. But anyway, here he is. He takes that all the blocks set up so well here. And again, that pulling tackle comes out here, opens this up the the pin down by the uh, tight end here. So he has space. He has a hole here. He could come outside here because guess what? He's got a crack block coming downhill from this outside receiver, which that is exactly how it sets up. Boom. So he takes this hole, gets this crack block. He's able to bounce it outside. Now he is one-on-one -on -one with this defender. And he just puts this, he leaves this guy, you know, ankles broken, just completely dismembered right here leaves him out to dry, and then he bounces it again, right? So he's got, you know, he's got nothing but open field after all that, right? Just houses it. And we'll get a good uh, view here of the replay because the move that he makes, you know, to, to make this play happen here, and, and I like, you know, how they diagram this. So you're going to get an idea here. You'll see 88 pin. You'll see 78 pull. So he gets the edge, boom, and then just plants that foot in the ground and accelerates up the field. And I like the other view that they're going to give us because they slow it down. It's pretty sick. And you just see him plant, boom, 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 and cut. And then again, watch this. I mean, look at that. I mean, that defender's like, what in the world just happened, right? Is this even real? So that's play number one for Purdue wide receiver Rondale Moore. All right, so on this particular play here, you're going to get a good example um, here of Rondell Moore, who is actually at the top of your screen in the slot right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to see him against a defender who's in like a soft press, right? So this defender is not looking to really challenge him immediately at the beginning. Uh, he's just kind of sitting there waiting to see where the break is going to happen. So Rondell Moore is going to give him a little bit of a move uh, that's going to force the defender to take you know, to make the wrong decision, so to speak, before he breaks it inside. And as you can see, this play has already started a little bit and Moore is already aiming like he's going to go fade to the outside. And the defender is already making his move to impede that route. So this defender ultimately wants him to go inside here uh, to where his help over the top is. And, you know, both guys, they need more, more help than just one guy over the top. But more like, as you can see right there, I don't know if you notice that, it's real sudden. See his body? He's, he's almost 90 degrees fully that way. And the defender, you know, they're taught to watch your waist, you know, your mid area right there. They're not really taught to watch your, your eyes or your head, but he is, he is showing up top that he wants to go this way. And the defender, he's in quicksand right here. 
Moore breaks it inside. Defender's just grabbing, right? He's reaching and grabbing. He knows he's in trouble. And the football is just thrown perfectly here. Catches it on the run. Now watch this move in space. Well, I'll rewind it. Here it comes. Catches it. Spin. Jock straps all over the field. Nobody knows what just happened to him. I mean, just overall, just a sick play. The timing was perfect. And, and watch more again. Boom, boom. Sells it. And that subtle movement was enough to get the defender to bite on the outside release. And he takes the inside. And that spin move there after the catch was just spectacular. All right, so play number three here. You're going to see Rondale Moore playing inside slot to the trip side of the formation here, to the wide side of the field. And what we're going to get a good example of is Rondell Moore and his ability, you know, after the catch, right? So there is a reoccurring theme that you see during his freshman season at Purdue where defenders who do not wrap him end up, you know, paying the price ultimately of not being able to bring him down or stopping him after the catch. So we're going to get a, a really good example here uh, where, where Moore is obviously getting off coverage and you're, you're going to see him just make a quick catch here on somewhat of a hitch route and just bounce off. Contact balance is perfect here. Takes the hit, bounces off of it, turns it to the outside and houses it. So I'll go ahead and run it. So boom, he's just making that quick move there. He's wide open, obviously. He's got plenty of space to make the catch. Holds on after making the catch and taking the hit. Bounces off the contact. Takes it to the house. Yet again, another big-time play for Rondale Moore. Showing off his tremendous athleticism and athletic ability. And again, this is a guy who, you know, squats 600 pounds. At five foot seven, you know, under 200 pounds, he's 180 or 185 pounds, maybe. Spectacular. All right, so play number four here for Rondell Moore. We're showing off once again his excellent athletic ability, his contact balance, his ability to make defenders miss in a phone booth. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And this play is just absolutely spectacular. He literally catches this. Now, now this is essentially, this is a screen, right? Looks like it's a tunnel screen here. He's going to catch it. And he's just going to follow these blockers, right? So he's going to make several people look silly here. So he, he gets that defender the, to miss. So that defender goes for the ankles, not happening. He dances right out of that tackle. And he's going to make this defender miss, right? So this is what I would call making someone miss in a phone booth, right? Because he looks corralled. He's going to get tackled. Not so much. He's, he's literally about to run over an all Big Ten linebacker and Zach Bond right there. <laughs> so we'll get a good view of him running over the linebacker here. So he catches it, follows the blockers well, dances out of the potential leg tackle there, makes a defender miss, runs over a linebacker. Actually, another guy gets some hands on him. Touchdown. Easy money. Steve Smith says, I see you. And that, that's our first appearance here for Steve Smith. And that's one of the comparisons that I have for Rondell Moore. Steve Smith, uh, he, he shows that kind of toughness. He shows the Tyreek Hill ability in space. He shows you uh, some of uh, the, the Tyler Lockett ability to get separation with precise route running and cuts in the open field. So Rondell Moore is a special player for sure. I expect him to still be a first-round draft pick. He's fallen down my board a little bit, mainly because of the injury concerns. But, I mean, I'm still so high on this guy. At one point, he was my number number two guy. He was my number three guy. I think the first time I ever seen the guy play, I was just so fascinated with him that I believe that, you know, he could be the number one wide receiver. But time will tell where he lands, but... I, I wholeheartedly believe he, he fits in just about any situation. He's not a gimmick or gadget player whatsoever. And I can't wait to see how things pan out for him at the NFL level. That'll do it for this episode of After Further Review, the NFL Draft Edition. 
We just finished covering the 2021 NFL Draft's top wide receivers, according to the Football Scout 365 NFL Draft Big Board. Don't forget to check out our website, footballscout365.com. You can also follow us on Instagram at Football Scout 365 and on Twitter. Just search for Football Scout 365. Be on the lookout for more great content.